Amen. Amen. Praise Jesus. We welcome you once again in the house of our Father. As you already know, this is the time for Bible study. As you have seen in the previous days, we've been covering specific topics. Uh, those topics that are very important in our everyday life. Uh, and today in particular, we look at what does the Bible say about marriage or about the person you're going to marry. I'm sure in our midst we have uh, youth. This is a question that many Christians ask themselves. And today we'll be looking into what the Bible says about knowing who you are going to marry. And what I want to start from, it's very important that we need to know first what God desires from us. Because most of the times we give God what we desire and we never want to know what God desires from us. When we look into the word of God, the most important thing that God desires from us is his righteousness. Obedience that we may have eternal life. So in a few words, God is uh, very, uh, very concerned with our eternal life than everything else. Maybe let me give you an example that you may understand better. When you see a car, we know that a car is made by a human being. But when you are going to make a car, you do not first ask for an advice from the car. He does not ask the car that you, should I make you? Instead, when a person realizes that he needs a car, he makes a car. He makes a car. So the same applies to us. God created us. And before he gave us life, he did not seek for any advice from us. And there is importance and the purpose that God saw before he created us. So the difference between ourselves and the example of the car I have just given you, the first difference is that God has given us the independent will, the, the, the power to choose. Let's say that this car that I have told you also has independent will, the power to make decisions. Imagine if you have a car and in the morning before you start the engine, it tells you that I don't want. And in the morning, if you tell us that I want to go to north, it says I want to go to south. You see that uh, using that car would be very hard for you. Did you know that when we are living our lives and we would not want to know what God desires from us and we would not want to do it, we are just like those cars. And so uh, that's what's most important to God is that we may know his will and we may want to be righteous. Coming back to what we are talking about, knowing the person that you should get married to, what the Bible says about it. The Bible tells us that there are two gifts in relation to this that God gives to people. There are those who are given the gift of getting married. And there are those that God chooses that they should be single. Amen. 
Amen. I know that's a heavy truth, but it's the word of God. In Matthew chapter 19, verse 11, I will paraphrase the scriptures because of time, and you will have your time to read. Jesus was talking to his disciples. And he showed something very important to them that there are people who are single who choose to be single for the sake of the kingdom of God. And when you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 7, the Bible says God has given to each one of us uh, his own gift. I remember in my life before I got married, God asked me this question. He, ha- he asked me, Are you ready in case you find that my, 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 my purpose for you, my will for you is that you won't get married? Are you ready to do that? Honestly, it was something very difficult for me. I really wanted to get married and I didn't want to even hear anything that is related to me staying single. And when God asked me that question, I just put it aside. It was very heavy for me to even uh, try to comprehend it. And as I kept thinking about it, there is something important that God revealed to me. He says, if it is the will of God that I should not get married, and I choose to get married, will I have a blessing of God in that marriage? I learned a very important lesson that when you are where God wants you to be, that's where your blessing is. And I told God that God, I have accepted. If you want me to live, uh, to, to stay single for my lifetime, that's okay, I will do it. After I just decided that, it's as if God was waiting for that answer, just like he was waiting for, uh, for Abraham to accept to, to sacrifice Isaac. God had given me a promise of having a wife, but he had made me forget about it so that I may first answer this question. And another important lesson that we, we, we learn from this, uh, from this example of where God asked uh, Abraham to go and sacrifice Isaac. Whatever God gives to us, God does not want it to master us. Amen. He wants you to be ready that whatever God has given you, you are ready to, to, to give it back to him. And because there are times when God gives us a blessing and those things that he has given to us, we are drawn uh, much to them that we even forget about God. And another very important thing to, 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 to keep in mind in as far as knowing who you are going to marry is concerned. It's very important for you to know that, having, uh, that marriage is a very big responsibility. Because if it is a young man or a young woman who is still waiting and still desires it, you sometimes may be seated there thinking that you just want to be like others. Or you start saying that uh, I'm, I'm coming much older and in my family there's no one else that is of my age. But in the eyes of God, those reasons are not important at all. But instead, it's a very huge responsibility. And the we want to know we so if we have it, we have to have We even see it in Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 22. Uh, Ephesians, we have it, we have to 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 have it, we have to
bagore mugandukire abagabo banyu nkuko mugandukira umwami wacu reka tube tureke naho ngaho gatoya uh, it says wives submit your husbands as to the lord nubwo ngo mu buzima bwawe busanzwe uburyo niba uri umukobwa ugandukira kristo that means that in your everyday life if you are a girl the way you you submit to the lord jesus bizagira ingaruka nuburyo uzagandukira umugabo wawe it will also affect the way you will submit your husband so dukomesha kwa ngo kuko umugabo ari we mutwe w'umugore umugore we nkuko kristo ari umutwe witorero ari ryo umubiri we ni nawe mukiza waryo for the husband is the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church his body of which he is the savior ngo ariko nkuko itorero rigandukira Kristo abe ariko abagore bagandukira abagabo babo muri byose now as the church submits to Christ so also wives should submit their husbands in everything abagabo mukunde abagore banyu nkuko Kristo yakunze itorero akaryitangira Husbands love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. Murabona hano imana iyo ushaka kwinjira muri mariage. Now if you want to get into marriage. Nkuko ruhande rw'umugabo, nkuko Kristo yakunze itorero akaryitangira. Now on the side of the husband, the word of God is telling us that just like Christ loved the church and gave up himself for her. Nono ku murongo wa 23 avuga ngo aryeze amaze kuryogesha aryeze amaze kuryogesha amazi ni jambo rye aryishyire rifite ubwiza ridafite ikizinga cyangwa umunganyari cyangwa ikintu cyose gisa gityo ahubwo ngo ribe iryera ridafite inenge and verse 26 says to make her holy cleansing her by the washing with water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church with without stain or wrinkle or any other blem blemish but holy and blameless so if you want to get married ugomba kumenya yuko ikindi kintu nange imana yashize ku mutima another thing that god has put on my heart uh, uh, today I have a wife and I have uh, a child and I thank God for, for the child. There's something that God taught me through this word. Uh, on the day of judgment. And this concerns everyone that is married. Imani zakubaza ngo uwo mugore naguhaye. God will ask you that that wife that I have given to you. Uwo mugabo naguhaye. The husband I gave to you. Ese watumye arushaho kugusa nange no kunyegera. Did you help him or her to become uh, to, 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 to get closer to God and become more holy? Amen. Amen. Eh ntago Maria ashobwa kugusa ngo kuko ubyishimiye umva utwawe na maranga mutima ariko hari yonshingano ikomeye mu maso y'Imana. So marriage is not just about pleasing you it's not about you are uh, you being very emotional about it there is a big big responsibility about it Kuko niba umugabo ari umutwe because if the husband is the head no kuvuga ngo abagomba kuyobora urugo mu gukora ubushake bw'Imana that means that he must do the will of God in leading the entire household Niba umugore ari umufasha and if the wife is the helper nawe ahari kugira ngo afashe umugabo we gukora ubushake bw'Imana She's also there to help the husband to do the will of God and to the children, there's also another big responsibility. I remember when my, uh, my daughter was born, the first thing that God put on my heart, yeah, God told me that there are millions, uh, billions of people on earth. And he told me that I had a responsibility to train this child in the ways of God that she may walk into them. So it is very important for you to think about all this before you even get married so that you may know what God, how, how marriage looks like before God. Uh, in Matthew chapter 18 from verse 6. Uh, we do not need to read it. I will just paraphrase it. There are words that God says about, about children. And the word of God says that uh, if one causes of these little ones to stumble, and 
So it is better for such a person to to be drawn in depth of water and have a large millstone hung around his neck. So as a as a parent, you have a blessing of training your child into the ways of God. Now, if, the, if your life is not a good example, and instead of leading the, the child to grow into the ways of God, it's leading her, uh, him or her astray, that means that you are bringing that that you are bringing danger onto your life simply because of this scripture that we have just read. Now as we talk about what the Bible says about uh, knowing who you should get married to. Of course there must be love, loving the, that person. And sometimes it happens that uh, a young man will look at a girl. And maybe that girl is beautiful. And he immediately tells himself that I love this girl. And maybe the same might happen to a, a young woman who looks at, the, at a, a young man and he's handsome and he has money and you feel like your heart is open to him. But it's very... It's very important for us to understand that how God defines, the, uh, defines love. This is the same way that the world defines love. Because the world deceives us and the way it shows us what love is, is different from what God, how God defines love. Because what we most uh, call love is actually self-love. You look at a person and you look at uh, you, uh, and you realize she has th oh he has things that you love and you think you have loved him or her. But if we read in First Corinthians chapter thirteen, First Corinthians chapter thirteen, from verse uh, four to verse seven, verse that we may look at what love looks like in the eyes of God. Yes. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boost, it is not proud, it is not rude, it's not self-seeking, it's not easily angered, it keeps no record, no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil but rejoices with the truth, it always protects, always trusts, and always hopes, and always preserves. Uh, you remember uh, in the previous days we said about, about agape love? That's the kind of love you should have for the person that you want to marry. And for you to get to this level of love, you cannot do it on your own. That's why you need God to give you that kind of love. That you may love properly the person you are going to marry. Now let us look at some of the things that we should base on for us to get to know who we should uh, love. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 14 It says don't be yoked together with unbelievers. This is something very very important if you are a Christian and you want to get you want to know who you are you should get, get married to. If you have given your heart to Jesus you should not at all uh, be yoked with someone who has not yet given their lives to Jesus. 
Because once of the times, uh, someone can be led by his own feelings. But it is very important for us to keep in mind who we are. We should make our decisions in the spirit, not in the flesh. Because these things have very, very uh, dangerous effects. Because in Amos 3.3, the Bible asks us, how can two people walk together without agreeing first? Because the Bible says, if you are going to be uh, the, same, the same flesh with that person, if you do not have the same belief, the same faith, it will be very, very hard for you to be able to walk together. But as you know, uh, the, the, the eyes that are filled with love cannot clearly see. So you, when you ignore this, you start, uh, you start reaping the fruits as you start the journey. One of the ways in which this can have uh, effects on your, li on your life is that you will not be able to pray together because you have different faith. It also has a very great uh, impact on the children. Because when a child is still young, he looks at their parents as their uh, role model. So it hurts the child to grow up seeing, their, uh, seeing his or her parents not agreeing on different kinds of things. And they, it gives her a wrong uh, impression and a wrong example. So one of the most important things that you should consider before you choose who you should get married to, that are they saved? If, if, they, are, if, if they are really saved and you're also saved, that's something that is very good. We also have different desires as human beings. It's not bad for you to sit down and think that you are, and start uh, desiring to have this kind of person. But it's very important for you to be careful. This list that you have that has different qualities of uh, the person that you want to get married to. It's very so it is very important for you to say that, Lord, I have this list, but I want your will to be the one that prevails on my will. Uh, because this is a place where uh, if you are walking uh, carelessly, you can fall. There's a one woman who once gave us a testimony that she looked at a, a young man and actually the, the list was, 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 was belittled before because this person was, um, was much more than what she had desired before. And God later showed her that this was not the that this was not her husband. It also happens that uh, what you have on the list is what exactly God brings to you. But at times also uh, the kind of person that God has prepared for you can come in a different package than he had thought of. Another thing that is very hard for young people is to know that should I first know if it is the will of God before I enter or I should first enter and then find out if it was the, the, the will of God. Uh, one scripture that can really help you uh, for you to be able to know what to do in such a circumstances is in Romans 8.14. 
that those who are led by the Holy Spirit are the true children of God. If God shows you this way and you walk through it, you cannot first walk and then look back and say, God, was this your way? No, you first uh, discern what, your, what God's way is and you start walking through it. Another thing I can confuse people uh, as we have already seen, it's very important for you to, uh, to, to, to walk with the person that really believes in God, who is a Christian. But if you are a boy, for example, does it mean that everyone who is a Christian, everyone who is uh, well-behaved is going to be your wife? Proverbs chapter 19 verse 14 that all kinds of wealth can, be, can come from your parents. But a prudent wife comes from the Lord. And when God gave Eve to Adam, he said, I shall find him a suitable wife. Someone who is suitable. Let's take an example. We are all Christians, but we have different callings. So it's very important as a Christian that God may lead you to the person that is compatible with you. Because I'm sometimes scared when people start telling me, isn't so and so saved? And you feel like that's enough. But it's very important for you to pray to God that God may bring someone who is compatible to you so that your, your callings shall uh, be compatible and you may walk uh, perfectly. Another thing is about dating. I remember myself before I got married. <laughs> if I can say that God uh, put me down, God told me that I have no ability to date. Uh, <laughs> Let's read in Jeremiah chapter 17. Uh, the it says, the heart is deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? I, the Lord, search as the heart and examine the mind to reward a man according to his conduct, according to what his deeds deserve. So it's very important as, as, as you go through this journey of choosing the person, you can easily be led by what you see with your eyes, but you are not able to go, in, to go deep and understand the heart of that person. But because the Lord is, can be able to understand the heart of a person, when you let him lead you, he leads you to the person that has a, a, a heart that is compatible to what he desires from your life. Another thing that is very important for you is that you may wait until the right time that God has prepared. Because there are times when you feel like you have a pressure to get married. But it's very important for you to trust God and believe that he's going to lead you at the right time. 
Because you may find that God is still in the kitchen preparing your food that you may eat it when it is well uh, ready and you are rushing so you miss it out that's why i disapprove people who pressure uh, young people to get married very quickly because at times you may lead the person to make a wrong choice the only person I would pressure, uh, pressurize the person who has been shown everything, but they are still scared maybe because of the finances and other things. That's when I can uh, encourage the person to take the step of faith. Uh, no, no, and now if you are lucky that the Lord has shown you the kind of person you should get married the person that you should get married to it's also very important for you to ask God for his wisdom that of how you're going to approach this person and there, because there are people who can come to know who God is leading them to get married to and because of not discerning the right approach to approach the person they end up messing up everything Another thing that is very important uh, for people who are in this journey of love is that they may uh, put their love in, 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 in light, that they may have transparency. Be afraid when there are things that you're trying to hide from the person you are in relationship with because you are afraid that once they discover, uh, they may not accept to get married to you. Because you are setting a trap before yourself. So it's very important for you to be truthful in this in the relationship. As I come to the conclusion, there's something that is very important that should help people who want to start a love journey. It's very important for you as a young man to know that this is the will of God. And also the, the, the lady to know on her own that this is the will of God. And if you are a young man and you have already told the girl that you love her, as you wait for her to respond to you, <laughs> it happened to me too. Uh, God warned me that I should be careful not to do anything that would influence her to give me a good a good uh, response. Because when you meet and each one of you knows on their own that this is the will of God, this helps you to have a very strong marriage. Because when uh, wind comes, you will remember that there is something that God told you uh, personally. And when you are weak or you want to move out, uh, that word that God has given to you can encourage you again and come back to it. And another thing that is very important, when, you are when your love is built on such a foundation, you are also sure that whatever you will need, God will provide. And whatever kind of resistance that you may, you, you may meet, God will make a way. And with all these things that I have told you, there are times when a person chooses to uh, have his whole, uh, his whole story hidden and out of nowhere they bring an invitation to you. 
and they come to the servants of God to bless them. Let me tell you the truth. When people are getting married and they are being prayed for right here, the greatest blessing is that journey that you have come through. You might deceive the servants of God and they will pray for you, but definitely you shall meet the consequences of the foundation you built for your love. So as I wind up, I won't tell you that uh, marriage is a covenant. When you enter it, you should know that it is a covenant. And as I started saying, uh, a household or if marriage is there for the glory of God. And we should also keep in mind that marriage uh, is only for this period of time, for, for, for the earthly things. Because God is preparing for us uh, the eternal life. Let's pray. Kumvishije matuku yacu mwami turagushimiye ku bwa bene data uhaya amahirwe yo kumva icyo uvuga kubigendanye n'urushako mwami turasenze kugira ngo tukwere ku mutima wa burimwe wese reka mwami ufashe burimwe wese kugira ngo aya magambo tukumvishije burimwe wese ayagenderemo mwami imana ni kugumugisha wa burimwe wese kugira ngo tuzabone ingo nziza zishingiye kuri wowe kandi mwami imana ndetse nabo wabuhamagarira mwami kuba ingaragu ubahe kubyakira kuko aho ngaho ari humugisha uri turagushimiye kuri imana yo kwizerwa senze twizeye mu zina ry'umwami wa Yesu Kristo amen